Welcome to the final installment on this little mini series talking about being a island of peace amidst the seas of turmoil. And in this final session, I want to talk about this idea of in nothing and in everything, which will make more sense in just a moment. Now, we've been looking at Philippians 4, 7, talking about this idea that the peace of God. And let me just read you the passage again, just so it's fresh in our mind. Philippians 4, 7 says this, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Now, in the last two sessions, we were talking about this idea that not only are we, we are to live with this idea of peace in every moment, because he is our peace, but we were talking about joy and then gentleness. Well, I want to take it one step further and look specifically at the other part of this passage in Philippians chapter 4, which is verse 6. Now, in verse 6, Paul is setting up a contrast. Now, listen to what Paul says in Philippians 4, 6. He says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So there's this contrast that's being set up. He says, on one hand, there is to be this thing where nothing is happening. And on the other hand, everything is to be happening. So he says on the first end that there's, there's to be no anxiety, that you are to be anxious in nothing. C- can you imagine what that would even look like? I mean, could you imagine what it, would, what it would even be like to never experience fear, worry, anxiety, foreboding? That nothing in your life ever produced fear, anxiety, worry, foreboding. That everything began to produce prayer and supplication. Let's dive into that a little bit more. That idea of be anxious for nothing. When you look at that word for anxiety or anxiousness, that word anxious literally means to stop worrying. It has this idea of an inner turmoil, care, concern, worry, or being unquiet. And what's amazing is that the root word of that word anxiety has this idea to divide or to split or to cut into pieces or to be distracted. And haven't we all experienced that? Where the moment that we begin to experience fear or worry or anxiety, it's like we're cut up into these little pieces. We're really broken and divided. And now we are completely distracted. Paul says that is not to go on in your life, that there should be nothing in your life producing that. Nothing in your life is producing that worry, that that fretting, that cutting you up into pieces and dividing you and distracting you. See, that is not to go on in the life of a believer. I was greatly encouraged some time ago by Richard Rembrandt's 366 reminders. Richard Rembrandt was often quoted by saying that there are 366 accounts in scripture where we are commanded to fear not. And of course, he would smile and say, that's one for every single day of the year, including leap year. And supposedly, he had every single one of those memorized, which would probably be a wise thing to do in a culture like we live in today. The reason that was such a great news for Richard Rembrandt is because the day that he was taken and kind of brought into uh, Romanian prison was on leap year. And so as he was, as, he, as, a, as a hood was put over his head, and as he was being dr- driven off to the prison, he was just reminding himself, okay, I'm not to fear. God said to fear not, that he is with me always. And he says, you know what? There's a promise even for this day, leap year, for me not to fear. What a great encouragement that every single day of the year, there is a command in scripture that we are to not fear. We are not to forebode. We're not to be worrisome. Hey, we are not to be anxious for anything. What if we lived that way? Now, here's what's interesting. The same circumstances that have always produced fear, anxiety, and worry are to do something different in our life. So if there's not to be fear, if there's not to be worry, if there's not to be anxiety, what is there to be? Intimacy with Jesus. See, we are told over and over in scripture to fear not. And let me just give you a couple of those passages, again, just to rehearse this and remind us. In 2 Timothy 1.7, we are told, For God gave us not a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of self-control. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus gives this incredible discourse on do not worry. And he says over and over, be anxious not about your life. Don't be anxious. Stop foreboding. Stop being fearful. So again, nothing in your life is to produce anxiety. Everything in your life instead is to produce prayer. Isn't that interesting? 
that the same circumstances that have always produced fear and anxiety are now causing something else to take place in your life. Well, what, what's taking place in my life? Prayer. So when you look at that verse again, look, oh, I don't have it there. But uh, verse six again, that in everything by prayer and supplication, right? With thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Paul is saying that prayer, supplication, and making requests should be the reality of your life. So here's the concept. The same circumstances that in the past we should produce fear and anxiety and worry are now pressing you unto the reality of Jesus Christ. So as an illustration for those who are watching the video portion, let's, let's imagine that this microphone is the circumstance. It's the pressure. It's the temptation. It's the, the issue at hand. Now you realize that if that issue, imagine here's God and here's me. If that issue gets between the two of us, it's going to put pressure, which means it's going to start pressing us apart. But what would happen if I got so tight with Jesus that there was no room between the two of us? So when that pressure, when that anxiety, when that circumstance came in my life, what if the only thing it caused me to do is get pressed unto Jesus all the more? See, what if every circumstance in my life caused me to press into Jesus? See, what if every, every issue, what if every turmoil, what if every hardship, what if every problem that always produced fear in the past, what if that would cause me to draw near to Jesus in prayer? What, what if it would cause me to have greater intimacy with him? What if, what if my relationship with Jesus could get better and better and better because of the circumstances of my life. See, nothing in my life, nothing in your life should produce fear, anxiety, or worry. Rather, it should press us under the grand reality of intimacy with Jesus Christ. Could you imagine if everything in your life did that? That if every temptation, if every trial, if every hardship, if everything that produced fear or worry, foreboding, fretting in the past, what, what if all that stuff that has always caused concern in the past, what if that would only drive you to Jesus? What if that would press you onto Jesus? And what if that would increase your intimacy and relationship with Jesus? Do you know what you would be? You would be an island of peace amidst the seas of turmoil. In fact, the more the seas are in turmoil, the more your island is at peace. Because while the outside rages, while the outside goes crazy, it is causing you to actually get intimate wrapped up in intimacy with Jesus. So again, let me read this verse from Philippians 4, 7 that we've been focusing on. Listen to this in light of all the stuff that we've been talking about thus far in Philippians 4, verse 4 through 7. Paul says that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Do you realize that you can be an island of peace amidst the seas of turmoil. You, you can have hope. You can have joy. You can live as you ought to live as a believer. But that only comes in and through Christ Jesus. Could I encourage you that in every circumstance of your life, in every turmoil, in every hardship, would you let those press you unto Jesus? R rather than experiencing the fear and the foreboding and the fretting and, and all that frightfulness of life, would you let the chaos and, and just the bonkers of, of, of culture and and of the economy and of the political stuff. And would you let all that press you to Jesus? Hey, could your finances press you to Jesus? Could your family press you to Jesus? Hey, could your circumstances press you to Jesus? See, what if everything in your life pressed you to Jesus? And when you begin to recognize that he is the fullness of joy, he is the fullness of peace, you can, in fact, be an island of peace amidst the seas of turmoil, even in a culture like we live today. Though things may be getting dark, though things may get even tougher and harder for us as believers, let us have hope because we have a God of hope. We are to experience the great reality of relationship and intimacy with Jesus in all things. So be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Now, I'd love to take this whole idea even deeper with you. And so next week in that session, we're going to be talking more about this idea of thanksgiving. And so when Paul says, hey, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. I really want to dive into this idea of what does it mean to actually be thankful? What is thankfulness and how can we experience a life of thankfulness regardless of the situations we are in? So I hope you will join me next week. Now, before I let you go, 
I want to give you a promotional idea or this little promo video on our upcoming week long training. See you next time. Our one week training is sort of our cheater's way of helping all of you gain a foundation and get started in this grand epic adventure known as following after Jesus. And if there was ever a time in history where we need to be grounded and sound on the word of God, boy, it's now. Our desire isn't to lead you to us, it's to lead you to Jesus. And so that you can take this hope of eternal life back to your home, to your church, to your family, and see them changed as well.